in our blood might just be the most under talked about film of this year and I am so hoping that it gets the attention it deserves. I was fortunate enough to catch the world premiere at Fantasia Fest in Montreal with director Pedro Koss and much of the cast and crew in attendance and was able to join them for a conversation after the premiere. To have some contextual understanding on maybe why I thought this project was so strong, it's important to understand a little bit about Pedro Koss. This is Koss's first narrative feature, excluding a film that he made in college with his roommate, now producer and actor, Aaron Kogan. But he has made a number of documentaries and he has edited a number of documentaries. And he brings this unique touch experience based on his work in the documentary world to this film follows people who are making a documentary and it does a better job of capturing this process of being an independent filmmaker of being an independent documentarian with little resources few resources and the struggles that come along with that process with a different director at the helm this would have been an entirely different film but because it was costs it works on this kind of meta exploration of the documentary filmmaking process alongside all of these other deep and intricate thematic explorations. This film exists on so many different interconnected levels, some of which I will be able to get into and some of which I won't for the simple fact that without going into spoilers, there's only so much that can be revealed. It really is a project that you need to see, you need to watch for yourself to fully understand and appreciate, but I'll do the best that I can without revealing anything that I shouldn't. In Our Blood stars Brittany O'Grady from The White Lotus alongside EJ Bonilla, who is a bit lesser known, but was absolutely brilliant here. Um, and he had a role in the more recent Exorcist film, The Believer. And then there is also a supporting performance from Milana Ubach from Euphoria. To describe In Our Blood as a found footage whore, I think would be a little misleading, although there is certainly inspiration here for sure. Even uh, director Pedro Cost and one of his producers, Aaron Kogan, both cited the Blair Witch Project as inspiration in one way or another for this story, but it's really much more than that. It follows Brittany O'Grady's character as she goes back to her hometown to reconnect with her mother, a struggling addict who has recently become clean. She brings with her her DP cinematographer camera operator played, of course, by E.J. Bonilla as they plan to essentially create a documentary about this reuniting between mother and daughter and that sort of familial relationship. So they journey back to Las Cruces, New Mexico, which is actually where the film was shot for Britney's character to be able to see her mother again. Shortly after seeing her mother for the first time in some time, she disappears. The mother is gone and cannot be found. They go to the center that the mother was working, which is a facility that supports folks struggling with addiction and who might be without a home in an attempt to find some clues. Interestingly, the location that they used to shoot here is an actual facility that exists in Las Cruces called the Community of Hope. And this is very important for Pedro Cos to include. As a documentary filmmaker, it was very important for him to do his background research. In fact, he said that he approached this first narrative feature very similarly to how he approaches his documentary projects. He did a lot of research about the homeless population in New Mexico, about those struggling with addiction and the programs that are intended to help those who are the most vulnerable. In fact, 
at certain moments in this film, the documentary crew, Brittany and EJ, go into this encampment and interview uh, folks without homes. And these are real people. These are not actors. These are volunteers from the encampment who decided that they would be in the film. And it's this rawness, this realness, I, the most over used word in in film this authenticity but it's true and that's what makes this a Pedro Cos film it's a narrative feature but it has that real grounded nature of a documentary at times you forget that you are watching a work of fiction you think that you are actually following these characters on their journey the cast and crew in the questions following the film said some pretty amazing, some wonderful things about Koss. It's always interesting when you see cast and crew interact. It's pretty easy to tell whether their feelings for one another are honest and true or whether they're just playing it up for the audience. In this case, there is no doubting that the connections, the relationship, the bond that was formed, particularly with Pedro and his two stars, was so deep and real. EJ and Brittany both spoke about Pedro as someone who gives a voice to the voiceless, who sees the unseen. And Koss was able to accomplish that with the way that he provided depth to every character, with the way that he did not necessarily lay blame on those who found themselves in a certain situation, because there's this understanding that it could have happened to any of these characters. It's a very human touch from Koss and he described this sort of empathy because those who are on the outskirts of our society who are most vulnerable themselves feel like monsters and that's the sort of pain, desperation, loneliness that he wanted to capture in, in our blood and he did. I understand that I've kind of been dancing around what this film really is and that's because as I mentioned at the beginning I can't go into the details without spoiling some things. It's an allegory for drug addiction and perhaps more importantly the cycles of addiction that continue through generations and are almost passed on, connected, locked in to one another. It's also a meta exploration of the documentary filmmaking process. There are so many little Easter eggs that as an independent filmmaker, it's impossible not to love. You have subjects fiddling with their lavalier microphones. You have conversations that are caught on hot mics. You have camera operators trying to sneak in shots when necessary. You have this moral dilemma of when to cut and when to keep the camera rolling. And so that works really on its own. And then of course we have this exploration of the most vulnerable in our population and how these folks are treated and mistreated. And again, how this appears to be cyclical in nature. And then all of that is somehow wrapped up in a genre piece that incorporates some gore, some thrills, some twists, and turns in a way that adds to the project rather than taking anything away from it. There are many found footage horrors, there are many faux documentaries, but In Our Blood is one of the better ones. This, of course, can be attributed to cost, to the cast, and to cinematographer Camo for perfectly capturing something that feels real and grounded in an indie documentary style, but then is also still beautiful and captures moments that are interesting from a visual perspective. This is very much a delicate dance, which is actually the phrase that DJ Bonilla used when he was talking about working with his cinematographer because there is so much handheld documentary style footage here, he had to work hand in hand with the DP. 
he would look at what the camera is seeing to inform his character and then the camera operator the dp would then listen to ej's voice to determine the intricacies of that camera movement it was in fact a dance between the two and it was executed beautifully there was so much that came after the premiere in this conversation and i unfortunately don't have time to dive into everything but i will drop a couple kind of interesting anecdotes or stories that folks will certainly be interested in once they watch the film but might be able to provide a little bit of additional context in the meantime first there was a question about improvisation and writer mallory westfall kind of very politically said that the script was always intended for improvisation and that there was quite a bit of it but the actors ej and Brittany, responded with well that's not really necessarily the case of course both being polite to one another but the actors both agreed that the script was so strong that any sort of improvisation was made easier because there was so much contextual foundation for them to build off what ultimately did help build the characters or more specifically EJ's character as Danny was a two hour improvised dinner with the director Pedro Koss. Before shooting Koss took EJ out to just a chain restaurant in New Mexico and had him basically have dinner as Danny as his character for two hours and EJ noted that this experience brought him closer to the character than any work that he had done previously a very interesting directorial strategy there when it came to Brittany what was very interesting to hear was that she in tandem with Pedro crafted this elaborate backstory for her character and I wish that I could go into the details here but it would venture into spoiler territory but suffice it to say that there is a lot more that meets the eye and the intricacies the minutia of her movements of her expressions are all rooted in the details of her character's past trauma i understand that i've done a lot of dancing around in this review but it's because this film exists on so many levels and to dive into one level would take hours and hours it's a film as mentioned about addiction it's a film about our most vulnerable but it's also an exploration of documentary filmmaking and uh, use of genre and horror in unique and fascinating ways it's a project that hasn't gotten a ton of attention yet but i'm very hopeful that it will because it deserves it thanks everyone do that uh, thing that you do comment like subscribe and uh, watch some other ones too, please.